Yeah. Now, speaking of, of Elio Gracie and Jigoro Kano, and Jigoro, Jigoro Kano and Elio Gracie are two different men. Yes. Both trained jujitsu, both grappled, uh, interested in self defense, but they're not the same people. They, they no. grew up in different places, Correct. they had different interests, they had different philosophies, they saw the art based on different things. Yeah, sure, both they were weak, they wanted to defend themselves, but Elio Gracie went out and competed. Elio Gracie had the whole diet thing, him and Carlos, I'm saying, not just Elio. And clearly at some point in time there was a shift because Kodokan Judo is not Gracie Jiu Jitsu in terms of philosophy, in terms of curriculum, in terms of many things. Sure, the techniques, where they come from, etc., it's all the same. But at one point in time, I would say there was a shift. And I would really love if you would explain at least how, what Elio's philosophy was on the mat and off the mat and how, what was he concerned with in order to be a better human being or healthier body or better fighter, a, a nicer person, all of that stuff. Yeah. You know, I think that they're much more similar than people think. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say something controversial right now. And, okay. I, and I'm going to say, and, and, and just to, to, to create mm -hmm. some, some discussion, some conversation. But I think in many ways, what mm -hmm. Elio Gracie was doing was more similar to Shigoro Kano's intentions than a lot of the judo that is practiced today. How so? Well, starting with the self-defense mindset. Mm. You don't find that in any judo schools, for example. Yeah. Starting with the complete approach that Jigoro Kano had. Jigoro Kano talked about Atemi Waza as part of judo. He talked about Nage uh, Waza, né? Tachi Waza, Nage Waza, and he also talked about Le Waza, Katame Waza. Most of what you see in judo today is just Nage Waza, mm -hmm. with, with, with an adaptation of Katame Waza for the, for the tournament. Mm. Right? Very limited. So I believe that what Elio Gracie was teaching was much closer to Jigoro Kano's ideals than what you see in judo schools today. Mm. Um, which doesn't mean that BJJ today is more similar. So I believe that how they were, let me start by saying how they were similar. I think, I think they were similar in the belief that the, the learning of jiu-jitsu slash judo transcends fighting skills. Mm. I think they both believed that the number one purpose of training was human development, becoming mm. a better human being. So I think they both believe that very strongly and they are both very much interested in, in a philosophy, in a way of life mm. and transforming lives through that philosophy. I think that was a point of sim similarity. Another point of similarity was with respect to the complete approach, as I mentioned. Mm. Because a lot of people think of Elio Gracie's jiu-jitsu as ground. Mm. But if you look at his curriculum, in the beginning, for example, lesson number one in Elio Grace's curriculum, there were five techniques. Four, Tachiwaza. One, Newaza. Four, standing up. Now, Goshin, Jitsu, they were self-defense techniques. Mm. But you have as many throws in that curriculum as you have grappling moves. And in every class, it's always going to be two or three techniques standing up and one technique on the ground. Mm. Now, let's talk about the difference. And that difference, because you have to understand that Jigoro Kano passed in 1938. Elio Gracie was just beginning. Mm. Elio Gracie never met Jigoro Kano. Carlo, Carlos Gracie never met Jigoro Kano. So a lot of the division that occurred was political mm. between the Judo Federation and the Gracie brothers and it had nothing to do with Jigoro Kano. 
your political issues. Now, one of these issues had to do with the rules of competition. Because the way that Carlos Gracie understood that a jiu-jitsu match should take place, and this is, not some, this is something that we can find, for example, in the book The Game of Jiu-Jitsu, that was written by Yukio Tani and, and Taro Miyake. They make it very clear in that book that a jiu-jitsu match is decided with a submission. Either submission or unconsciousness, a knockout. Mm. That there's no other way. That the throws are nothing more than a means to take the fight to the ground where the fight is going to be decided. Mm. So that's how the Gracie brothers understood jiu-jitsu. No points. No interruptions. You start setting up, yes, with the throws, but then it continues on the ground. And in order to win, you need to make the other person tap. Or verbally say, I can't go anymore. Or verbally say, I can't go. Or sleep, pass out. A choke, for mm -hmm. example. So, suddenly, these Jap then, suddenly in Japan, things get transformed. The rules are transformed because Jigoro Kano is interested in creating a more balanced approach because he felt that the way that jiu-jitsu was being practiced earlier was favoring too much the ground to the detriment of the throws. Mm. So then there were rule changes that with establishing the ippon, so a throw can win the match, establishing osai komi, where you can also win score ipon by osaikomi so a, a point system and also mate which is when there's no action on the ground they start standing up and that's the greatest division between the two camps mm. the gracie brothers felt that that was a ploy by mm. the japanese who knew that they were best on the ground because remember back then they didn't have any access to what was happening in japan mm. so suddenly these Japanese, they come, because before you had Geo Omori and all these Japanese who were accepting these matches, start standing up, keep going on the ground until somebody submits. And then suddenly these more recent arrivals, Japanese are coming to Brazil and saying, no, now it has to be done this way. And Elio Grace says, what? These rules don't favor us because our expertise is on the ground. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to cheat. Why are they changing? And then they created this theory that it was a, a way for the Japanese to hide the ground because the ground is where the match is decided. Mm. So then that started to create some animosity because the Japanese felt that they were the, the highest authorities mm. of the art, if you will, because, they, because that's where it came from and that they should... Mm be able to establish how it was practiced around the world. But the Gracie brothers were very competitive and felt that they were able to compete on equal terms with the Japanese and demonstrate that they were practicing jiu-jitsu in a way that mm. would allow them to, to compete in, in, in equal terms, mm. that they were not you know, technically inferior. They were like, wait a minute, but we're not going to change the rules now. Mm. We're going to continue to do it like we... And then that's, I think, where... The, the main source of misunderstanding. So 